Chapter 5 Self-Discipline and Personal Excellence Aristotle wrote, We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, therefore, is not an act, but a habit. You are your most valuable asset. Your life, your potential, and your possibilities are the most precious things you have. Thus, your great goal in life should be to fulfill that potential and become everything you are capable of becoming. Your ability to learn, grow, and fulfill your potential is unlimited. Today, people are graduating from high school and college in their 70s, learning new subjects and developing new capabilities. Your ability to learn and remember can continue throughout your life if you keep your brain alive, alert, and functioning at its best. Your most precious financial asset is your earning ability. Your ability to work is your primary source of cash throughout your life. You could lose your home, your car, your bank account, and everything you own, but as long as you have your earning ability, you can earn it all back and more in the months and years ahead. Your biggest investment. Most people don't realize this. They take their earning ability for granted. But it has taken you your entire life to develop your earning ability. Every bit of education, experience, and hard work that you have invested in learning your craft and developing your skills has gone into building this asset. Your earning ability is very much like a muscle. It can increase in strength and power year by year as the result of regular exercise. Likewise, the opposite is true, too. If left alone or ignored, your earning ability, like your muscles, can become weaker or even decline because you have simply failed to upgrade it continually. In other words, your earning ability can be either an appreciating or a depreciating asset. An appreciating asset is something that grows in value and cash flow every year as a result of continual investment and improvement. A depreciating asset, on the other hand, is something that loses value over time and finally reaches the point at which it is written off, being of little or no further value. The choice is yours as to whether your earning ability is increasing or decreasing month by month and year by year. See yourself as the president of your own personal services corporation. Imagine that you were going to take your company public on the stock market. Would you recommend your company as a growth stock, continually increasing its value and earning ability each year? Or would you describe your company as one that has leveled off in the marketplace, that is not really going anywhere in terms of increased value and income? Would you recommend stock in U Inc as an excellent investment. Why or why not? What got you here won't get you any further. Some people are actually losing value each year, declining in earning ability because they are not continually upgrading their knowledge and skills. They don't realize that whatever knowledge and skill they have today is rapidly becoming obsolete. It's being replaced by new knowledge and skills that if you don't have them and someone else does, you will be in danger of being overtaken by your competition. Join the top 20%. In Chapter 1, I mentioned that the 80-20 rule applies to income. The top 20% of people in our society earn and control 80% of the assets. According to Forbes, Fortune, Business Weekend, Wall Street Journal, and the IRS, by many estimates, the top 1% of Americans control as much as 33% of the assets. The most interesting discovery in income inequality is that most millionaires, multimillionaires, and billionaires in America are first generation. They started with little or nothing and earned all their money by themselves in one lifetime. In America, there's a high level of income mobility, which means that you are able to move from the lower levels of income to the upper levels. Almost everyone who is in the top 20% today started in the bottom 20%. From that point, they began to do something different with their time and their lives, and as a result, they put themselves squarely onto the upward escalator of financial success. No limits on your potential. The average income increase in America is about 3% a year, just about the same as the rate of inflation and cost of living increases. People whose income is increasing at 3% a year seldom get ahead. They have a job which can also be thought of as an acronym for just over broke. But the fact is that no one is better than you and no one is smarter than you. 
If someone is doing better than you are today, it is simply proof that they have learned how the law of cause and effect applies to their work, and they have begun doing the things that other successful people have also done. The application of the law of cause and effect to your personal life is learn and do. The achievement of personal excellence is a decision you make or that you fail to make. But in the absence of a commitment to excellence in your chosen field, you automatically default to average performance, or even mediocrity. No one becomes excellent accidentally or by just going to work each day. Excellent requires a definite decision and a lifelong commitment. The Keys to the 21st Century Knowledge and skill are the keys to the 21st century. Becoming the best person you can possibly be and moving to the top of your field requires the application of self-discipline throughout your life. Mental fitness is like physical fitness. If you want to achieve either, you must work at it all the time. You can never let up. You must be continually learning and growing every day, week, and month throughout your career and in other areas of your life if you're going to join the top 20% and stay there. To earn more, you must learn more. Abraham Lincoln once wrote, The fact that some have become wealthy is proof that others may do it as well. What others have done, you can do as well if you learn how. Everyone who is at the top was once at the bottom. Many people who come from average or poor families with average incomes, or who grow up in average circumstances, have gone on to become some of the most prominent people in their fields. And what hundreds of thousands and even millions of other people have done, you can do as well. The philosopher Bertrand Russell once wrote, The very best proof that something can be done is that someone else has already done it. Ordinary into Extraordinary Very often you see people who don't seem to be as intelligent or as talented as you are, who are nonetheless accomplishing remarkable things with their lives. There's nothing that will make you angrier than to see someone who seems to be dumber than you, who is doing better than you. How can this be? The answer is simple. At a certain point in their lives, they realized that the key to success was personal and professional growth. It was a dedication to lifelong learning that made them successful. The good news is that almost every important skill is learnable. Every business skill is learnable. Everyone who is proficient in any area of business was at one time completely ignorant in that area. Every sales skill is learnable. Every top salesperson was once a beginning salesperson and unable to make a call or close a sale. All money-making skills are learnable as well. Almost every wealthy person was once poor. You can learn anything you need to learn to achieve any goal you can set for yourself. Make a decision. The starting point of your moving upward and onward toward becoming one of the most competent, most respected, and highest paid people in your field is simple make a decision. It's said that every major change in your life comes about when your mind collides with a new idea and then you make a decision to do something different. You make a decision to complete your education, upgrade your skills, or get into a good college. You make a decision to start a new business. You make a decision to take a particular job or start a particular career. You make a decision to invest your money in a particular way, and especially you make a decision to be the best in your field. Many people say that they would like to be happy, healthy, thin, and rich. But, as discussed in Chapter 4, wishing and hoping is not enough. You have to make a firm, unequivocal decision that you are going to pay any price and go any distance in order to achieve the goals you have set for yourself. You have to make that decision and then burn your mental bridges behind you. From that moment on, you resolve to continue working on yourself and your craft until you reach the top 20% or beyond. Follow the leaders, not the followers. When you decide to be one of the best people in your field, look around you and identify the people who are already at the top. What characteristics do they have in common? How do they plan and organize their days? How do they dress? How do they walk, talk, and behave with other people? What books do they read? How do they spend their spare time? Who do they associate with? What courses have they taken? What audio programs do they listen to in their cars? These are just a few of the questions you should ask in order to find out what successful people are doing that you might also need to do. After all, you can't hit a target that you can't see. 
Your selection of the right role models can have an enormous impact on your future. Dr. David McClelland of Harvard and author of The Achieving Society concluded that your choice of a reference group can determine as much as 95% of your success at achievement in life. Your reference group is made up of the people who you feel are just like me. Your natural tendency is to adopt the attitudes, styles of dress, opinions, and lifestyles of the people with whom you identify and associate most of the time. Fly with the Eagles Some years ago, one of my seminar participants told me his story. Bob Barton said he had started off in his 20s in a large company with about 32 salespeople in his branch. It was his first real job and he was starting at the bottom. Because he was new, he hung around with the other junior salespeople. As they say, birds of a feather flock together. After a month or two, Bob noticed that the top salespeople in the office also associated with each other. They did not spend time with the junior salespeople. They also spent their time differently. When Bob got into work in the morning, the top salespeople were already there, planning their days and working on the telephone and making appointments. Bob also noticed that the junior salespeople would come in later, drink coffee, read the newspaper, and make excuses for not making sales calls. Bob decided that he was going to pattern himself after the top salespeople in the office. He looked at the way they dressed and groomed, and he resolved to dress and groom the way they did. Each morning he would stand in front of his mirror and ask himself, Do I look like one of the top salespeople in my office? If the answer was no, he would go back and change his clothes until he felt that he looked as good as the best people. He began to come into the office and organize his day before 8.30 a.m., so that he was ready to make calls as soon as his customers were available to see him. One day, Bob asked one of the top salespeople if he could recommend a book or audio program that would help him. It turns out that top people are always willing to help other people improve. When he got the recommendation, Bob immediately went out and got the book and sent away for the audio program. He read the book and listened to the program, and then reported back to the top salesman. The top salesman gave him some more advice on things to read and listen to, all of which Bob followed. Bob asked another salesperson how he planned his day, and that salesperson showed him his time management system. So Bob began to plan and organize his day the way the top salespeople did it. By using these top salespeople as his role models and emulating them whenever possible, Bob started to make more appointments, see more prospects, and make more sales. Within six months, he was one of the top salespeople in the office as well. By that time, the top salespeople had invited him for coffee and lunch, and he became one of them rather than one of the junior people. The next year, Bob went to the National Sales Conference, where he met a lot of the top people from around the country. He deliberately sought them out and asked for their advice. What books would they suggest? What audio programs would they recommend? What seminars had they attended? What strategies did they find that were the most effective in building their sales business? Bob did something that very few people do. When he received advice, he followed it. He immediately took action on the advice and then reported back to the people who had given it to him. Within four years, Bob became one of the top salespeople in the country. His friends and associates were the other top salespeople in his branch and in the other branches. His income had increased several times. He wore beautiful clothes, drove a new car, lived in a lovely home, and had a wonderful wife. And he said that it all came about as a result of asking top salespeople for their input and then following that input and applying it to his sales activities. But here's the kicker. Over and over, the top people, the ones who had been winning the sales awards year after year, told Bob the same thing. He was the first person who had ever come up to them and asked them for advice. No one else had ever sought them out and asked them why they were so successful. The answers have all been found. Here is a great discovery. All the answers have been found. All the routes to success have been discovered. Everything you need to learn to move to the top of your field has already been learned by hundreds and even thousands of other people. And if you ask them for advice, they will give it to you. Successful people will have their phone calls held, cancel other appointments, and put their work aside to help other people to be successful. But you must ask and then you must follow their advice once they give it to you.
If you can't ask them directly, read their books and attend their talks and seminars. Listen to audio programs created by successful people. Sometimes you can send them emails and ask for advice. Learn from the best. Set high income as a goal. If your goal is to be in the top 20% of money makers in your field, the first thing you need to do is to find out what the people in the top 20% are earning today. This information is available. Just ask around. Check industry statistics. Go on to Google. You can find this information if you look for it. Once you know the income target at which you are aiming, write it down as your goal. Make a plan to achieve this level of income and work on it every day. Never stop until you reach it. The secret to high income in business and sales is quite simple. Learn and do. Like jacking up a car, you improve one notch at a time. Each time you learn and practice a new skill, you ratchet up your earning ability and it locks in. As long as you keep increasing your earning ability, you keep ratcheting up to a higher level from which you seldom decline. Use the 3% formula to invest in yourself. To guarantee your lifelong success, make a decision today to invest 3% of your income back into yourself. This seems to be the magic number for lifelong learning. According to the American Society for Training and Development, this is the percentage that the most profitable 20% of companies in every industry invest in the training and development of their staff. Decide today to invest 3% of your income into yourself in order to make yourself an appreciating asset to continually increase your earning ability. If your annual income goal is $50,000, Resolve to invest 3% of that amount, or $1,500, back into yourself each year to maintain and upgrade your knowledge and skills. If your income goal is $100,000, resolve to invest $3,000 per year back into yourself to assure that you reach that level of income. The payoff is extraordinary. I was giving a seminar in Detroit a couple of years ago when a young man about 30 years old came up to me at the break. He told me that he had first come to my seminar and heard my 3% rule about 10 years ago. At that time, he had dropped out of college, was living at home, driving an old car, and earning about $20,000 a year as an office-to-office -office salesman. He decided after the seminar that he was going to apply the 3% rule to himself, and he did so immediately. He calculated 3% of his income of $20,000 would be $600. He began to buy sales books and read them every day. He invested in two audio learning programs on sales and time management. He took one sales seminar. He invested the entire $600 in himself in learning to become better. That year his income went from $20,000 to $30,000, an increase of 50%. He said he could trace the increase with great accuracy to the things he had learned and applied from the books he had read and the audio programs he had listened to. So the following year, he invested 3% of $30,000, a total of $900 back into himself. That year, his income jumped from $30,000 to $50,000. He began to think, if my income goes up at 50% per year by investing 3% back into myself, what would happen if I invested 5%? The next year, he invested 5% of his income, $2,500, into his learning program. He took more seminars traveled cross-country to a conference, bought more audio and video learning programs, and even hired a part-time coach. And that year, his income doubled to $100,000. After that, like playing Texas Hold'em, he decided to go all-in and raise his investment into himself to 10% per year. He told me that he'd been doing this ever since. I asked him, how has investing 10% of your income back into yourself affected your income? He smiled and said, I passed a million dollars in personal income last year, and I still invest 10% of my income in myself every single year. I said, wow, that's a lot of money. How do you manage to spend that much money on personal development? He said, it's hard. I have to start spending money on myself in January in order to invest it all by the end of the year. I have an image coach, a sales coach, and a speaking coach. I have a large library in my home with every book, audio program, and video program on sales and personal success I can find. I attend conferences both nationally and internationally in my field, and my income keeps going up every year. 
there are three simple steps to become the best. Becoming one of the top people in your field requires discipline and application more than anything else. There are three simple steps that you can follow to become the very best in your field. 1. Read 60 minutes in your field each day. Turn off the television and the radio. Put aside the newspaper and read material about your field for one hour each day before you start working. 2. Listen to educational audio programs in your car. Start them and stop them as you listen so that you can reflect on what you have just heard and think about how you can apply the ideas to your work. 3. Attend courses and seminars in your field regularly. Seek them out. Take online courses in the convenience of your own home. Courses that enable you to upgrade your skills and give you important ideas that you can use to be even more successful. The power of compound learning, like compound interest, is quite amazing. The more you learn, the more you can learn. The more you learn, the better your brain functions and the smarter you get. Your memory and retention rate improves. The more you learn, the more relationships you find between something you learned at one time and something you learn at another time. Never stop learning and growing. The Achievement of Mastery How long does it take to achieve mastery in your field? According to the experts, the acquisition of mastery requires about 7 years or 10,000 hours of hard work. It takes 7 years to become a master salesperson. It takes 7 years to become a successful business person. It takes 7 years to become an excellent diesel mechanic. It takes 7 years to become an excellent brain surgeon. It seems to take 7 years or 10,000 hours of hard work to get to the top of any field. So, you might as well get started. The time is going to pass anyway. The starting point of your achieving mastery is for you to commit to excellence. I've never met a person who made a decision to get into the top 20% in their field who did not eventually achieve it. And I never met a person who got there having not made that decision. Making the decision and then following up with continuous, purposeful, disciplined action is essential. Talent is not enough. As I mentioned earlier, according to Jeffrey Colvin in his best-selling book, Talent is Overrated, most people learn how to do their job in the first year, and then they never get any better. They just coast in their jobs. But the only direction you can coast is downhill. Many people will work away at a job for many years and never rise above the average. They will do their job from 8 to 5, but they never lift a finger to upgrade their skills. They will not invest any time learning their craft unless their company pays for the extra training and gives them the time off to take it. The average person does only an average job, and as a result he earns an average income and worries about money all his life. He never realizes that often there is only a thin veil that separates the average person from the excellent person. The fact is that if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. No one stays in the same place for long. Two hours each day will get you to the top. It's been calculated that all you need to invest is about two extra hours per day to move from the average to the superior. Only two extra hours each day will move you from worrying about money all your life to being one of the highest paid people in your field. People immediately ask, where am I going to get an extra two hours each day? It's simple. Take a piece of paper and do the following simple calculation. Calculate the number of hours in a week. Seven days times 24 hours equals 168 hours. If you deduct 40 hours for work and 56 hours for sleep, you have 72 hours left over. If you deduct 3 hours per day, 21 hours, for getting ready for and traveling to and from work, that leaves you 51 hours of spare time to do with as you please. If you invest 2 hours per day back into yourself, 14 hours per week, you still have 37 hours left over. That's an average of more than 5 hours per day of free time. All you need to do is devote two hours each day to move you from average performance to superior performance at whatever you choose to do. Form the habit of continuous learning. The best news is that when you begin reading in personal or professional development literature, listening to audio programs in your car, taking additional courses and upgrading your skills in the evenings and on the weekends, 
rather than watching television, you soon get into the habit of continuous learning. In no time at all, it will become automatic and easy for you to learn, grow, and upgrade your skills every day and every week. The average adult watches about five hours of television each day. For some people, it is seven or eight hours. They turn on the television first thing in the morning and watch it until they leave for work. They turn it back on as soon as they get home from work. They then watch television until 11 or 12 o'clock at night, going to bed without enough time to get a good night's sleep. They then get up in the morning, drink coffee, and watch television for as long as they can before they go off to work once more. You can be rich or poor. It's your decision. Your television set can make you rich or poor. If you watch it all the time, it will make you poor. Psychologists have shown that the more television you watch, the lower are your levels of energy and self-esteem. At an unconscious level, you don't like or respect yourself as much if you sit there hour after hour watching television. People who watch too much television also gain weight and become physically unfit from sitting around too much. Your television can also make you rich, but only if you turn it off. When you turn off your television, you free up time that you can then use to invest in becoming a better, smarter, or more competent person. When you leave your television off when you are with your family, you'll find yourself talking, sharing, communicating, and laughing more often. When you leave your television off for extended periods of time, you break the habit of watching television, and you'll hardly miss it at all. Your television can be an excellent servant, but it's a terrible master. The choice is yours. Increase your income 1,000%. There is a simple seven-step formula you can use in order to increase your productivity, performance, and output and income by 1,000% over the next 10 years. It works for everyone who tries it. It is simple. First, answer this question. Is it possible for you to increase your overall productivity, performance, and output by one-tenth of one percent, which is one one-thousandth in an entire working day? Your answer will probably be yes. If you were to manage your time a little better and work on more valuable tasks, you would quite easily increase your output by one one-thousandth in a day. Having done this for the first day, could you increase your output by one-tenth of one percent the second day? And the answer, of course, is yes. Having increased your performance by one-tenth of one percent on Monday and Tuesday, could you continue to do this for Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday? And again, the answer is yes. One-half of one percent per week. One-tenth of one percent times five days per week equals one-half of one percent per week. Is it possible for a normal, intelligent, hard-working individual to increase his or her output by one-half of one percent, or one-two-hundredth, in a single week? Of course it is. Having done this for the first week, could you keep up the same pace of personal development the second week? Of course you could. Could you get one one-thousandth of one percent better five days a week for an entire month? If you could, this means that you would be one-half of one percent better per week, multiplied times four, or two percent more productive in an entire month. There are 13 four-week months in a year. Four times 13 equals 52. Having become 2% better in a month, could you repeat that in the second month, in the third month, the fourth month, and so on? Of course you could. By working on yourself a little bit each day, learning new skills, getting better at your key tasks, setting priorities, and focusing on higher value activities, you can become 26% more productive over the course of an entire year. Having achieved this goal for the first year, could you do it for the second year and then the third? Could you keep it up for 10 years? And the answer, of course, is yes. And the best news is that when you continue to work on yourself, it becomes easier and easier for you to get better and better as the weeks and months go by. By the law of accumulation, or the law of incremental improvement, by the end of 12 months you would be 26% better. If you continue to improve at 26% per year, by the end of 10 years, with compounding, you would be 1,004% more productive. Your income would increase at the same rate. This formula works if you do. There are seven steps in the 1,000% formula. Step 1. Arise two hours before your first appointment, or before you have to be at work. 
Invest the first hour in yourself by reading something educational, motivational, or spiritual. As Henry Ward Beecher once said, the first hour is the rudder of the day. When you get up and invest the first hour in yourself, you set yourself up mentally to have an excellent day. You will be more positive, alert, creative, and productive all day long when you start your day by investing the first hour in yourself. If you read in your field one hour per day, that will translate into about one book per week. One book per week will translate into about 50 books per year. Since the average adult reads less than one nonfiction book per year, if you were to read 50 books in your field each year, do you think that would give you an edge in your profession? Do you think that it would move you ahead of virtually everyone else in your business? Of course it would. If you read 50 books per year for 10 years, this would be 500 books that would help you to improve your productivity, performance, and income. At the very least, you would need a bigger house just to hold your books, and you'd be able to afford it. Reading one hour per day in your field will make you a national authority in three to five years. This alone can give you your thousand percent increase over the course of your career. Step 2. Rewrite your goals every day. Get a spiral notebook and rewrite your major goals in the present tense every morning before you start out, without looking back at what you wrote the previous day. This writing and rewriting is the process of programming instructions into the guidance mechanism of your mind. When you rewrite your ten goals each morning, you will continually see and think of opportunities to achieve those goals all day long. You will become more focused, channeled, and directed. You will be more purposeful and determined. And you will achieve your goals much faster than if they were merely wishes floating around in the back of your mind. Writing and rewriting your goals each day can give you your 1,000% increase in income over 10 years. Step 3. Plan every day in advance. Make a list and set priorities on your work before you start off. Your ability to set priorities and to choose the most important thing that you could be doing at every moment is the key to organizing your life and doubling your productivity. We'll talk in detail about time management techniques in Chapter 12. Working on your top priorities can increase your income by 1,000% over 10 years, and it is probably impossible to achieve without it. Step 4. Discipline yourself to concentrate single-mindedly on one thing. Choose the most important thing that you can do each day. Then, start on it first thing and work on it until it's 100% complete. Your ability to focus and concentrate when you develop and hone it into a habit all by itself will enable you to double your productivity, performance, and output in the next month. And it will give you your 1,000% increase over 10 years. Step 5. Listen to educational audio programs in your car. The average business person who drives spends 500 to 1,000 hours per year behind the wheel of their car. When you turn your car into a university on wheels, a mobile classroom, you get the educational equivalent of one to two full-time university semesters as you drive around. Many people have gone from rags to riches by simply listening to educational audio programs in their cars as they drive from place to place. You could do the same. This alone could give you your 1,000% increase. Step number six, ask two magic questions after every call or event. First, ask yourself, what did I do right? Then, ask yourself, what would I do differently? The first question, what did I do right, forces you to think through and recall all the correct things that you did in that last meeting, presentation, or event, even if it was not successful. Write them down. The second question, what would I do differently, forces you to think through all the different ways you could improve your performance in a similar situation. Write these ideas down as well. In both cases, by reviewing your performance, by thinking about what you did right and what you would do differently, you program yourself to perform even better the next time. This is one of the fastest and most powerful exercises in personal growth and development I have ever discovered. This process dramatically speeds up the rate at which you move into the top 20%. Step 7. Treat every person you meet like a million-dollar customer. 
Treat each person you meet and work with, both at home and in the office, as though he or she is the most important person in the world. When you treat people as if they are valuable and important, they will return the favor by treating you as if you are valuable and important as well. They will want to be associated with you, work for you, buy from you, and introduce you to their friends. You begin treating people like million-dollar customers by starting at home with the members of your family. Remember, they are the most important people in your life. So when you start your day well first thing in the morning by making the members of your family feel important and telling them that you love them, you'll be more positive, relaxed, and happier for the rest of the day. Fully 85% of your success will be determined by how much people like and respect you, especially in business and sales. Never miss an opportunity to treat people well. When you practice these seven steps each day for a month, you will see changes and improvements in your life, work, and income that will astonish you. After a month of regular practice, you will have formed a new habit of continuous personal improvement that can carry you onward and upward for the rest of your life. Be the best. Lifelong personal development and the commitment to personal excellence requires tremendous dedication, discipline, and willpower. The greatest payoff is that every time you learn and apply something new, your brain releases endorphins, which make you feel happier and more excited about your future. Every time you learn and apply something new, you'll have a greater sense of personal power. Your self-esteem, self-respect, and personal pride will increase. You'll feel very much in control of your earning ability, which is one of the most important parts of your life. In the next chapter, we'll talk about the importance of courage, of overcoming the fears and doubts that hold most people back. It is often the case that we know what we need to do, but we lack the courage to take the risks that accompany trying anything new. Instead, we make excuses for inaction. Now, here are some action exercises that you can do. Number one, make a decision today to invest in yourself and getting better, as if your future depends on it, because it does. Two, identify the most important skills you have that determine the quality and quantity of results you get at your work, and make a plan to get better in each one. Three, if you could wave a magic wand and become absolutely excellent in any one skill, which one skill would have the greatest impact on your earning ability? Whatever your answer, set that skill as a goal, make a plan, and work on it every day. 4. Set excellent performance in your work as a goal, and then determine exactly what you will need to do every day to join the top 20% or better in your field. 5. Look ahead 3-5 to five years and determine the new knowledge and skills you will need in order to lead your field in the future. Then start acquiring them today. 6. Select the top person in your field, the one you admire most, and use him or her as a role model for your own development. And 7. Commit yourself today to lifelong learning, and never let a day go by without getting better in some area.